Strauss with Trimble and the Building Point teams. Uh, today we're going to show you how to use the X7X9 laser scanner and field link uh, on what concrete pours and how to get that started very quickly and very easily. So um, what you see here is what comes with it. I have the scanner, my tablet with field link, the backpack to carry it, and then every once in a while reference elevation is good to have. If you have a state elevation you can hit finished floor height. I can also actually shoot the laser to a reference elevation on the uh, wall here or using a target as well too. Generally for uh, wet concrete pour, I actually want to do that because I just want to make sure that it's relative. Going down flat, I actually don't care if it's um, to that reference elevation. I just want to make sure that it's getting screened level um, and there's no bumps. Now what I will do a lot of times is create a zero zero point to reference off um, so that my positive or my higher values are positive, my lower values are negative, um, but that's not actually needed. Um, so getting into this, Again, connecting, it's just like connecting to an RTS or GPS receiver with field link. Um, I could bring in a DWG if needed as well, um, or uh, a, any type of model or PDF and align to that. In this example, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to mainly reference the scan um, to zero, and generally I will always do a low scan, um, which will give me 27 million points um, and not take images. So I'll start the scan here. Um, what you're going to see happen, so in about a minute 30, um, 30 seconds of that will be uh, scanning. The other minute is actually going to be two things that uh, nothing else in the market actually does, which is self level to about three seconds, which allows us to use these scanners for ESTM, uh, E1155, FFFL reports, um, and it will self calibrate. So you don't need to send it into us for servicing, um, and you're essentially uh, knowing that the data that you're collecting is going to be good or else it won't collect it. Um, it's guaranteed for the life of the scanner. And the level, most of the scan levels on the market may level to like 18, 19 seconds. Um, three seconds means we we know uh, the level accuracy uh, to well less than a sixteenth and the range accuracy of the scanner over the, the range of it is also uh, less than a mil and a half. Um, this scanner right here is the X9 will do a million points a second, the X7 will do 500,000 points a second up to 80 meters, this one up to 150 meters. Um, generally what you're limited to when doing more concrete pours is how high you can get the scanner so that it can still see um, at uh, a good angle. So both scanners will get easily on the top of the tripod like you see here about 150 feet. You always do fast scan because you actually don't need that much data to see what's high and low. Um, if I get the scanner higher, I, yeah, I can go out to the 200, 300, I mean, a couple hundred feet, right? Um, but uh, generally what will happen is you'll scan every couple minutes, see the high and low spots, uh, and then move it around. Um, this scanner uh, has been on the spot of the dock in Boston Dynamics, so you could put it on a uh, laser screen too if you wanted to uh, give control of that to the operator, or have the guy, um, your finishers, off the port kind of move too. Um, I like to scan when it's wet so you know that you're putting it in level and then also go back and scan as they're working it because um, when they put on those trowels you can actually see if they're pushing it too early um, or if they need to level something out. Um, this is very quick, uh, kind of like a laser level. I would always check to that at least initially until you're comfortable. Um, you can see by putting the laser level down how that concrete's going down. This is going to be pretty close, actually a lot more accurate because you don't have to rely on the air. Kind of the, the truthfulness, the levelness of the guy uh, holding that level. Uh, this will just show you exactly where things are high and low. So here you can see I actually have my scan. Uh, this is a top down view looking into my garage. I could come here from the side view. Now, one thing I like to do, um, I generally do this actually before we get started, which is I will create a point right here. The reason why I do this is just to have everything uh, kind of make sense visually. With uh, the numbers. So, right here, you're going to see that scan center came in um, with a zero foot elevation, but my point right there, zero, is going to be a little bit higher than that. It's actually going to um, be even with that scanner, so my floor is going to be close to negative five feet. Um, I will come in here and essentially, just to make that make a little bit more sense, reference uh, just visually the high level spot. Now, I could pop, I could do this very accurately um, and tie it in 
uh, with that with the laser on the scanner. Um, again, this is the only scanner that will georeference in the field and set up just like a total station. Um, but a lot of the times, and for actually the accuracy of my floor here, being a sloping out, doesn't really make sense. Um, and a lot of times when you're doing more concrete, you're actually just trying to see relative height on those spots. So here we can see uh, it's the full view, the roof. There's my high and low spots um, with everything making a little more sense in that reference elevation on the left pane there, showing high and low spots. So here you can see um, I have some very exaggerated high bumps and cuts, mostly because my floor is actually too slow to do anything too flat. Um, that's good. So it floods in here, it'll rinse out, uh, makes it hard to do for this example. Now one thing I would like to point out is you can refer back to the video in this link uh, to show how this scanner compares to a dipstick. Um, super flat, the fell analysis, so well less than 16. Um, this just kind of shows you visually a little bit better. So there are my high and low spots again. In a couple minutes I have to set my reference elevation. Took most of that time in my explanation. Um, but here I can come in and um, point the laser to it. Uh, but generally what I'll do, rather than doing that, is uh, um, go back here to tools. This will point the laser over here. Um, I see it right there, you won't be able to from that vantage point, but I can. Um, I wouldn't actually do this. I would generally actually just work with uh, kind of the area. So I can actually just come in here and start to say off the wall in about two feet, you have a high low spot. Obviously something like this, anyone can see it. You wouldn't need a laser scanner, but the point of scanning is when you're doing flat work. So what I'll do is I'll take my grouse rough out the, or uh, smooth out that area, right? And then go ahead and scan again. So, I pointed the laser, I can do this manually, um, or um, just kind of let the guys know on the trails where they're at, and then I'll pull it out and essentially scan again. So, trail, 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 make it a little bit better, and then we'll go back through, scan again, see the high those spots. As it's going again, um, this scan will tie back in to the previous scan automatically. Uh, registration, or registration is tying those scans together as long as there's a little bit of overlap. They will stitch together. Um, I can go 30, 50, 70 feet in between scans and have them register back together. I do just need some planar surfaces to do that, uh, but it's not completely necessary either. Generally, for what concrete scans you're going every. 50 feet or so. Um, the X7, X9, and Field Link are the only, uh, is the only solution on the market with that level capability and the actually ability to georeference or tie back to a model and refine. So I can, in other videos, we've displayed this, um, and we'll show this in another one where you can actually do uh, kind of surface analysis reports and do grid line points um, to share with other people on the job. This workflow is just showing you the wet concrete scans. Uh, the next video will actually show you how to do it. The example of hitting a reference elevation for uh, like grinding or prepping on the floor. So, in this video, uh, we'll stick to just the wet concrete. You'll see this is what we're looking at now. It's the um, first scan still, the second scan is going to come in. And hopefully, what we'll see is a little bit flatter um, area of where we worked. Now, Every, usually every couple scans, I'd actually just essentially turn off the previous scans. Like this would be an example of working the concrete and taking it flatter. So what will happen is um, that first scan will still be in there, but I can just visually turn it off and then see how that second one tied into it. So here it's imported it'll register. Um, that'll essentially lock it in to that reference elevation here. Um, and then once the once that's done, we'll see those high and low spots. So there's my 
registration, come in and turn off that second scan. You can see we've flattened out this area. It looks great. Um, again, this is an over exaggerated. That's probably closer to. That's probably closer to like an inch. Um, in general, when you do this, um, or two inches, you're looking at like an eighth inch. Um, pop that one on. And then the other thing I'll kind of show you, which is really nice, is I can actually just do a section view of what I'm looking at. So that is how you would manually pull the scan um, and do a wet concrete. We'll show you in the next video how to hit a reference elevation here. Um, with that reference elevation, it'll be, uh, I'll, we'll show you how to manually align the reference elevation and then a manually align that scan to a model. So please reach out to your nearest building part representative. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, as the board go on, obviously I would just pick up the scanner and move it. Um, do another scan, tell them where they're high and low, and then generally come back through uh, after the scan to get a close four uh, scans. That'll kind of be what, this, what the floor is in perpetuity, so I know what it was within that three days, showing the high and low spots, um, or really showing that it was good. So that if the GC calls me back out later, I actually have a representation of what the floor looked like when I was, uh, what was in my spec, rather than, um, the six months or so after it's cured and moved and been driven on and all that. So, uh, again, this video just showed how to do kind of that 90 seconds wet, wet, uh, wet concrete analysis to make sure it is flat. Um, the next video will actually show you how to do reference and scan to a DWG or model with a manual reference elevation. And then we have previous videos showing how to do the FFFL um, compared to a dipstick as well as creating that surface report. So, thanks, and uh, we'll see you at Older Concrete 2024.